colleague, dear colleague, I think that we can start. We are almost 600 colleagues. I hope that the IC system will support it. We are here today in order to, to make a presentation about the insurance policies that are available. Uh, we are not selling something, we are just trying to let you know which are the different options because there is not one single product that can be best for everyone. It depends on your condition, your age. Uh, uh, the presentation will aim at providing you the best possible information in order to decide what you have to do in order to, to get it. Uh, our suggestion, strong suggestion, is to really get an insurance policy because our system is wonderful, is uh, well managed, but still sometimes whenever you are confronted with serious concerns is not enough and you really need to have some something on top and this is what we are trying to explain today so i leave the floor to our colleague uh, this presentation is the same that is made all over the institution for colleagues who are getting their retirement that's why it's mentioned under the ages of uh, the, the ghr so we are not working for the ghr at least not officially <laughs> but still, <laughs> we work all together in order to provide the staff with the best possible assistance. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Cristiano, and good afternoon to everybody. This is a very challenging issue today because uh, there are many people attending this conference on one hand, so there is a technology issue, and I hope that everything will go the right way. Then insurances and this is a very a very important and difficult topic to deal with why is it so important because we all know that medical cares are very expensive and their costs are rising up over the years if you go to your general practitioner practitioner today you know that you have got to pay more than what you had to pay last year we all know that this is one point then on the other hand there is the JC system and we all know also, that JCS doesn't reimburse you everything. Uh, there is a reimbursement of up to 80 or 85 percent, and we see that it's a little bit more complicated than that, meaning that, that the gap between what you have got to pay to the doctors or to the hospitals and what you can get back from the JCS system is increasing, and if you want to fill in that gap, you have got to subscribe to a complementary insurance. Normally, I start my presentation with uh, these slides, with a few key points that are, well, sometimes unknown or often misunderstood. And it relates to the differences between the two statutes, the statute of uh, active officials and the statute for, of retired officials, because there are differences as far as the medical coverage is concerned. So as an active official, you benefit from the JCS coverage. We all know that, and uh, it provides you, it, you are entitled to a 80 or 85 percent reimbursements thanks to the JCS system. But don't forget this, that the system is subject to ceilings. You know that there are ceilings if you go through the GIP. Uh, you know that there are 51 medical cares for which there are ceilings, and PMO also applies quite regularly the excessivity rule. So we'll see later on that, well, that reimbursement of 80 or 85 percent, this is only the theory, because in reality that's slightly different. Then, as an active official, and this is a very important point, you benefit from the Article 73 from the staff regulation and it concerns the accidents. So in case of accidents, and I mean all the accidents, you are fully covered. So you are not covered only at 80 or 85 percent, but you are covered at 100 percent for all the accidents. And when I mean all, I mean accident requiring an hospitalization, but also the accidents not requiring an hospitalization. And on top of that, if following the accident, you are invalid totally or partially, or even worse, if you die, the Article 73 provides you with a lump sum, a capital that is put at your disposal. And this capital is quite huge. In case of invalidity, that's eight times your annual salary 
not your monthly salary, eight times your annual salary. This is a big amount of money. And in case of a death, this is five times your annual salary. So one point that is worth mentioning here is that in case of accidents, you are fully covered. You are fully covered and you don't need to subscribe to a specific uh, accident insurance if you are active. Then for the retired officials, situation is exactly the same. So JC's coverage maintain no change concerning the reimbursements, of course, but don't forget that the Article 73 disappear. So the accidents are not fully covered anymore and they will be only covered by the GC system, up to 80 or 85 persons. So don't forget for the retired people or those who are close to retirement, you have got to do something about the accidents because if you don't do something, uh, as you lose the Article 73, you won't be covered at 100%, but only at 80 or 85 percent by the GC system. And of course, in case of invalidity or death, no capital at your, uh, would be put at your disposal. Those are the few points that I wanted you to, to remember. Then I'm going to talk to you, of course, well, I, I'm going to give you a, a few, well, information concerning the evolution of the JC system and especially concerning, well, the ceilings and the excessivity rule. Then point three, I will, of course, and this is the main topic of the conference, I will talk to you about the complementary health insurance is to supplement JCs, so to have a full 100% coverage of all the expenses. Point four, well, I mentioned the Article 73. So for those who are close to retirement, I, I, I will talk a little bit about the replacement of the Article 73 by a very specific accident insurance product. And then point two, well, I'm a bit late, but point two, and this is very important, it concerns the traveling uh, assistance, the travelling uh, assistance when you are when you are abroad, because there is one point that you have got to know: uh, if you are ill or if you have if you are hospitalised abroad uh, when travelling in a foreign country, uh, JCS will never, never, ever repatriate you. So if you want to be covered and to cover the repatriation costs, you have got to have a specific insurance. Sometimes people don't know that. So first point, uh, the, limit the evolutions and the limitations of the JC system. So I say that uh, reimbursement of 80 or 85 percent, this is the theory. And in reality, what do we see? Uh, of course, well, in case of serious illnesses, uh, you are fully reimbursed 100%, but uh, not all the illnesses are recognized as serious illnesses. Then you have got to be very careful if you are well hospitalized in countries with, uh, high, with a very expensive medical care. I mean, countries like Switzerland, like the US, like Australia. So if you are hospitalized in that kind of countries, the cost, the medical cost, can be very, very expensive. And then, and then, the GC system and the PMO will apply, will apply the excessivity rule. So I like figures, and well, the last part, the bottom part of the slide, is very, very interesting. And we see that, for example, in 2022, the reimbursement was not, well, from a global point of view, statistic, statistically speaking, the reimbursement was not 80 or 85 percent, but it was only 73.9 percent. So we are far from 80 or 85 percent. And on top of that, if you consider only the medical cares for which there are ceilings, so there are 51 of them, the medical cares for which there are ceilings, are reimbursed only at a level of less than 64 persons. So we are far from 80 or, or 85 persons. So here we immediately see the need that if you have got a, a proper uh, complementary health insurance, there is a, a bonus to, to have that. Then evolution of the JC system. Well, JC is a nice system, but it has to be funded. And you know how the system is funded, is funded thanks to a levy taken from your salary or your pension. And we all know that the salaries of the new staff are unfortunately lower than the salaries of the staff 
who, who came into the institutions, well, many years ago. And, well, the next slide is quite interesting. Just consider the two lines with the, the, horizon, the horizontal uh, red arrows. It concerns the funding, so the funding of the JC system. So, the mean contribution for the active officials, first line, you see that while well, there is a levy of 1.4 percent taken directly from your salary, you know that when you get your salary or paper, and twice that amount is paid by the commission. So we see that well, the funding of the of the JC system is directly linked to your salary or your pension. And what do we see? As an active official, the average, well, the mean contribution is, well, in 2021 was 4,159 euros. The third line, if you consider the third line, this is the same figures, but for the retired officials. And you see that the amount, the contribution of the retired officials in 2021 was higher than the contribution of, their, of the active officials. And we all know that when you get a pension, normally the amount of your pension is less important than the salary you had until the months before you, you, you got retired. So what does it mean? It means that the contribution, the contribution of, uh, well, of both the active officials and the retired officials to the JC system is going to diminish because we know that the salaries of the new officials are lower than the salaries of the, of the older uh, officials. And it means that globally speaking, well, it's a question of years, maybe five years, 10 years, but the funding of the JC system will diminish. And that's the reason for which I think that it's very unlikely that the JC system will increase its reimbursements in the near future. We don't have to be uh, too scared about the situation right now because uh, on the 1st of January this year, tw 2024, well, uh, JCS had a reserve of more than 300 million euros. So we have got the time to see, but we have got to be careful because uh, uh, the medical cares are going to rise up over the next years, and we'll see that in the next slide, and the funding of the JC system is not going to change for sure. Then I told you that the medical care costs are increasing. Here, this is a very interesting slide. It comes from a think tank, Willis Tower Watson. They are specialized in analyzing uh, figures uh, concerning uh, medical insurances. Well, in 2023, well, the increase of the medical care cost was at 10.9% and the prediction for this year, 2024, are 9.3%. So we see that the medical care costs are, well, rising up over the years. This is obvious. And if you take, well, the second part of the, of the slide, the net, the net evolution, you see 5% in 2023 and 5.9% in 2024. Net evolution means the evolution without taking into account the inflation. What does it mean? It means that the 5% and the 5.9% reflects sort of a, the excessivity that is supplied by the hospitals and the, and the doctors. Because on top of the inflation, they add something else just to make more money. But what do we see? We see that the medical care costs are increasing, and I've just said to you that the funding of the JC system is going to be flat in the best situation, so it's not going to change anything concerning your reimbursement. So, solution to fill in the gap. Two options, either you set money aside, so you open a saving account in a bank and you put, well, on a regular basis, a certain amount of money and in case you've ne you need, you need to, to use it, you have got money put, set, put aside so that you can pay your doctors or the hospital. Second option, and we'll, take, we'll talk about that later on, health insurance uh, to supplement JCs. Set money aside. This is quite tricky, but how much money do you, do you have to set money aside? Not a lot because you also, well, thanks to the staff regulation, you benefit from another article, the Article 72, Paragraph 3. And what does it say? 
it says that over a period of 12 months, you have got to choose a period of 12 months if the cost, the medical cost, that are not reimbursed by the GC system are above half of your salary, the difference will be reimbursed by the PMO, by GCs. Very difficult to understand. Let's go through an example. Let's imagine that you have got a monthly salary of 5,000 euros. Half of your salary, 2,500, clear. So you need to choose a 12-month reference period, and it's up to you from the 1st of January until the 31st of December, or you can choose well, uh, a period. Then if during that period, the medical costs that are not reimbursed by GACs, so I call them the minimum 15 percent, but we have just seen that very often it's 20 or 25 percent, are, well, in my example, 2,800 euros. So the missing part, the part that is not reimbursed by GACs, 2,800. So the difference between 2,800 and half of your salary, meaning 2,500, it means 300 euros. Then if you ask PMO to apply this article, they are, this article 73 to paragraph three, then you will be reimbursed 300 euros. It means that the risk taken, if you want to, to, to play with that game, the risk taken is only half of your salary. Be careful because, well, uh, the excessivity applies and uh, the exclusions applies as well. So you have got to be careful. Not everything would be reimbursed by JCs anyway. But this is very important because uh, this article, well, apparently in the past, well, this rule was automatically applied to everybody, but it's not the case anymore. So if you think that you might have uh, an awful lot of medical expenses, well, you can ask the PMO to apply that rule, but you have got to decide, uh, well, the period of time, and then uh, to be sure about that, you have got to, to keep your, your booking, your, your book, so you have got to, to, to open an Excel file and, and, and fill it, uh, well, all your medical expenses for, for one year. So, set money aside, we have just explained you that situation. There is an advantage to set money aside. You don't have to pay taxes. You don't have to pay a premium to an insurance company. So it's not too expensive. But we'll see that with half of your salary, it's possible to subscribe to a very good uh, insurance uh, contract. Then uh, insurance schemes complementary to JCs. You have got to decide uh, which insurance you want to have. And very often we talk about major risks. Major risks mean uh, hospitalization, because if you have got to go to a hospital because of an, an accident or an illness, it can be very, very, very expensive. So you can cover, if you want to, only the major risk. But some people want to cover everything, including, including the old patient cares. But it's going to be more expensive, of course. And then I will talk a little bit about the accident insurance, especially for the pensioners, because the pensioners, as I mentioned it already, doesn't benefit from the Article 73 from the staff regulation. So how to decide and how to choose a complementary health insurance? It's like if you want to buy a new car. If you want to buy a new car, you, you have got to consider your needs uh, and, your, and what you are ready to pay for your new car. A new car, well, do, 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 do I want to have a, a four-seat car, a two-seat? Is it going to be a car just to travel downtown or to, to, to travel abroad? Uh, do I want a, a, a petrol engine, a hybrid engine, or a, an electric engine? And what is the price I'm ready to pay for my car? It's exactly the same for the insurances. You have got to know exactly what you want. And what is the risk you want to mitigate? Do you want to cover the risk if you are hospitalized? And if you are hospitalized only in case of illnesses or both in case of illnesses and accidents? Do you want to be fully covered? I mean, including, well, the old patient cares. So you have got to consider 
the risks you want to mitigate? What is your risk aversion when your health is concerned? Then it's not free. I keep on telling that insurance companies are not caritative associations. They, they want to make money, so you have got to pay a premium. And depending upon the coverage you want to have, the premium will be lower or higher. And we'll see that uh, in very specific cases later on. Then there is what kind of insurance to choose. Collective insurance or individual insurance? Collective insurance means that there is a contract. You, you know, insurance companies, when you sign a contract, they are, well, uh, very often they are uh, gray zones. There are points, well, nobody have talking to you about, and that can be confusing when, uh, when uh, an event occurs. For example, if you subscribe to a contract, uh, can the partner be uh, insured as well? What about the kids? Uh, when the contract uh, finishes, uh, what is the evolution of the premium? So there are many, many, many uh, points, tiny points, uh, which are very important. If, in the case of collective insurances, there is a contract, a contract signed by the insurance company and an association. Well, in the case of the European institutions, there are two collective contracts existing. The first one is a contract signed between Alliance and Affiliatis. So this is a 90-page contract, and this is very important because you are protected with that sort of contract. You are very protected. There is another example. It's Signa, insurance company Signa with um, Ayachi. They, they, they signed a contract, so there is a collective contract, and a collective contract means that there is a legal framework. You are protected, and you are also represented, because behind the contract, there are many officials. For example, uh, for the Alliance uh, contracts, there are more than 25,000 officials having subscribed to the contract. It means that if you have got a complaint, if something goes the wrong direction, there are people, the people who signed the contracts, so people from Affiliatis IHH or people like Serge Krutzen who is attending the conference or myself, we can talk to the insurance well, uh, managers to make things change and to help protect the officials. So this is very important. A collective insurance is very, collective contract is very important. Then, when do we need to subscribe to the contract? Also, I keep on telling that the sooner the better, because insurance companies doesn't like uh, people who are old and ill. If you are old and ill, you are not going to get a contract, or you will have to go to, through medical questionnaires or very annoying things like this. So the younger you are, the best it is, because the younger you are, the more easy it's going to be to get the insurance, and then once you get the contract, you can't leave it. You have got it, and then if there is something happening in your life, accident or illnesses, you are fully covered. Continuity of the insurance. Of course, if you choose an insurance, it must be a lifelong insurance. It doesn't have to stop at the age of 75 or 80. Well, it has to finish once you are not there anymore. But sometimes there are changes occurring in certain contracts when you are, well, 75 or 80 years old of age. And we'll see that in the examples I will show you later on. Then what about the partner, the kids? What about the contractual officials? You are contractual official, so when your contract is over, can you keep the can you keep the insurance or not? So you've got to, to be careful about those points. Then, uh, coverage of the accidents. So as most of you are active officials, so you don't have to care about, well, uh, insurances covering the accidents because you benefit from the Article 73. But for the pensioners, this is different. And you have got to consider the way you want to cover the accidents. Because Article 73, as I mentioned it already, covers all the accidents, accidents with and without hospitalization. So if you want to have a, a similar product, you have got to be very cautious about the one you choose. Because very often, accidents are only covered in case of hospitalization. 
Then you have got to pay attention to the medical questionnaire and the moratorium. Medical questionnaire can be annoying because if you have got to fill in a medical questionnaire, it can list to three well options. Either you are excluded because well, the insurance company considers that you are too ill or in a too bad situation to, to, to have the, the contract. Maybe it can lead to partial exclusion, so you are accepted, but some illnesses or, well, diseases are not covered. Or, if you are lucky enough, if you have no health issues to, to mention, you could be, well, uh, you can be insured immediately with no uh, restrictions. Moratorium. Uh, very often, if there is no medical questionnaire, there is a moratorium. A moratorium, very often, it's a two years period, two years moratorium. This is the period during which all the existing illnesses at the date of the signature of the contract won't be covered. Example, an example this will make things clear. Uh, you subscribe to a contract today, no medical questionnaire because you are young, so no medical questionnaire. And then after six months, so before the two years, the end of the two years moratorium, uh, you have got to, to have prothesis at your knees because, well, you have got pains at your knees and you have got to, to have prothesis. So what the doctors will say, they will analyze the radios and the IRMs and they will see that you have, you have got arthrosis. And of course, the arthrosis you have got six months after the signature of the contract, of course, was already present when you signed the contract. It means that for a period of two years, you are not going to be reimbursed in that situation. So you will have to wait until the first day after the moratorium to be fully covered. Then there are some other parameters to, con to consider. Uh, is the contract valid worldwide or is it only valid within the European Union or the economic European area? What is the stability of the premium? Uh, is the premium linked to uh, the index or to the index and the statistics? So you've got to be cautious about that because uh, companies are not always very transparent about that. If there is a collective contract, they have to be transparent. Everything has got to be clear from the beginning. But if there is no collective contract, they can do what they want. Then I will start with the real stuff. I will start with three options offered by Allianz. Allianz is an insurance company, and the three op options I'm going to, to talk to you about right now uh, are offered by Allianz, and they are collective insurances be because, well, a contract has been signed between Allianz and Affiliates. Three options, so you see hospice, well, their names are hospice sickness and accident. The next one is hospice sickness, and the third one is hospice plus. So I come back to the first one, hospice sickness and accident. What does it mean? It means that all the hospitalization costs linked following an illness or an accident are covered at 100%. But here, you have got to be hospitalized. We don't talk about outpatient care. You have got to be in a hospital. So if you are in a hospital because of an illness or an accident, you are fully covered. For the active officials, it's not necessary to have that because the accident part for the active officials is already covered by the Article 73. So I know that sometimes some active officials have got this contract. It's useless because the accident part is too much, but just for your information. So this is a collective insurance contract signed between Allianz and Affiliatis. You have got to subscribe to it if you want to, to benefit from before retirement, before retirement. The first day after your retirement is one day too late, and it's impossible to negotiate anything with Allianz. They are very strict about that. If you want to have that product, you have got to subscribe to it before retirement. And ideally, at least six months before retirement, because between the, period, the, the six months period before your retirement, they will uh, oblige you to fill in a medical questionnaire which can be very tricky. So if you want to subscribe to that sort of contract, do it at least six months before your retirement. 
so that you can avoid the medical questionnaire. There is a moratorium of two years, of course, because uh, well, the, the insurance company uh, want to, 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 to prevent well, people from subscribing to a contract when they are about to be ill or to be hospitalized. This is a lifelong insurance and it covers both illnesses and accidents. There, there is a full reimbursement, 100 persons, including the cases if uh, JCS applies ceilings or excessivity, the excessivity rule. So even if JCS only reimburses you 65 percent or 70, 75, 70 or 75 percent, you will be fully reimbursed in case of hospitalization. This is very, very important. So no ceilings, no excessivity rule, and this is very important. Uh, all the medical expenses are covered uh, two months prior to the hospitalization and six months after the hospitalization. So if you need uh, the, the case of a nurse just to replace bandages or to, to disinfect the wounds, uh, well, because of of the sur of a surgery, then for a period of six months, all the all the, the, the fees are covered. So this is very important. Maybe one point uh, interesting for the young uh, female officials: pregnancy is fully covered. So even if you subscribe to the contract one week before giving birth to a child, you will be fully covered for the hospitalization. And this is very tricky because uh, one week before signing the contract, you were already pregnant. But this is uh, one of, of the advantage of that contract. And this is, well, sort of, well, a, a gray zone that has been clarified. And this is an advantage that Alliance offered us. So for the young women, know that with that sort of contract, all the pregnancy uh, costs are fully covered, even if you sign the contract uh, one week before going to hospital to, to give birth to the child. For the contractual officials, you can keep the insurance when leaving the JC system. If you are not uh, an official anymore because your contract is over, you can keep the contract. You can keep the contract. Of course, you will have another primary insurance. Probably you will have a, a national primary insurance and not the JC system anymore. But you will be able to keep this contract. And of course, the reimbursement will be based upon, well, the JC's base. But it's very important. You, this is you have got you you have got a worldwide coverage. It means that you will be uh, reimbursed all over the world. But pay attention to the point. There are limitations outside the economic uh, European area. What are the limitations? The limitations outside the EEA is twenty five thousand euros a year per person. So if you have to be hospitalized and you decide to go to Switzerland or, or to the United States of America to, to be hospitalized, don't do that because they will, the, the 25,000 euros ceiling will apply. And you know, Switzerland, for example, is a country where the medical care costs are high, so the 25,000 euros will be very, very easily and quickly reached. So. This contract, use it, and if you have to be hospitalized, do that in Brussels, in Rome, in Milan, in Germany, or in Stockholm, in Sweden, but don't go abroad to get hospitalized because it's not the right product to do that. And then you have got to pay a premium, and the premium, uh, well, you see the table, so if you are young, uh, if you are less than 18 years of age, this is, well, less than 80 euros a year, well, those are annual premium, and if you are in the range of 36, 50 years old of age, 142 euros. So with one, well, let's say between 100 and 265 euros, you are sure that in case of hospitalization, you will be fully reimbursed. This is very cheap. This is a very cheap product, knowing the, advantage, the advantages that are hidden behind the product. Then second product, it's exactly the same, hospice safe sickness. 
same product but only the sicknesses requiring an hospitalization are covered. So the accidents are not, co not covered anymore here. So I don't go through all the lines because, uh, well, the, the, the points are very similar to the previous contract. Just one thing, the accidents are not covered anymore. We understand that. It means that as an active official, this is the product which can be very, very useful because as the accidents are already covered thanks to the Article 73, this product for the active officials can be very, very useful. And the premium you have got to pay, so all the points are similar to what I've just explained to you, moratorium, six months before retirement, and then the premium you have got to pay is, well, slightly inferior to what you had to pay in the previous contract. For example, if you are 61 plus, here you have got to pay 194 versus 265 in the previous contract, normal because accidents are not covered anymore here. This is a very, very interesting contract for active officials. Then you have got the third option, Hospicef Plus. This option is a bit tricky because it concerns, it's very similar to the first contract, Hospicef Sickness and Accidents, so same coverage in case of hospitalization hospitalization due to sicknesses or accident, but on top of that, you benefit from the PLUS coverage, and the PLUS coverage means the old patient cares, so the cares that do not require an hospitalization. And with this contract, the old patient cares are covered not at 100%, but only at 80% of the missing part. So if JCS reimburses you 80%, here you will be reimbursed 80% of the 20% missing from JCS for the outpatient cares. So this is quite interesting, meaning that at the end of the of the story you will be reimbursed uh, up to well 96, 97%. But of course the outpatient cares includes the dental cares, the ophthalmology well, all the specialists, uh, doctors, and you know that those uh, cares, those medical cares can be very, very expensive, especially the dental cares. So the insurance company want to avoid, uh, to, avoid to pay too much money to the, to the affiliated. And for the dental, dental cares, there are ceilings. Dental cares, there is a ceiling of, well, 800 euros per year per affiliated for the first two years and after four years, you can get the maximum of 3,200 euros. So it's very interesting, but there are limits for, and for the specialist, well, it's mentioned on the slide, but for the specialist, uh, there is a limitation, there is a ceiling of 1,250 euros a year. So it's nice, it's a very interesting products, but you have got to pay a premium as well, and when you see the premium you have got to pay, uh, the premium is quite high. We are not in the range of 100, 200 euros, but here we are, well, in the range of, uh, well, 573 euros if you are young, up to almost 2,000 euros if you are retired. So the premium you have got to pay is very, very high. And sometimes it's not worth well, paying that amount of money if you can go tells. But this is up to you to decide whether you, you want to cover the outpatient cares or not. So that's over for Allianz. So there are three contracts proposed by Allianz. Now we, and don't forget, you have got to subscribe to it before retirement. One day after retirement is one day too late. Then there is, well, for the order of your, uh, well, those contracts from Allianz were previously, well, managed by Cigna and Van, Van Breda, but well, this is for the history part of the, of the conference. <laughs> I'm kidding. Then let's go to another insurance company, Cigna. So we are not with Allianz, we are with Cigna now. And Cigna proposed two contracts, Cigna, hospitalization, sickness and accidents, and sickness only. This is very similar to what I mentioned for Allianz. 
pay attention. This is, those are contracts not for active officials, but only for retired officials. So if you missed the train, the first train, if you forgot to subscribe to, a, to an alliance contract with the Cigna, you still have two years because you can subscribe to, that con to those contracts up to the age of 67. So you have got two more years to make up your mind and to subscribe to an insurance. So once you are retired, if you didn't get an alliance contract or if you was refused, if you wanted to have a contract with Alliance, but you, was, you were excluded because of your health or because of the medical questionnaire, you can go to Cigna and try to get this contract. It's very similar to, to the Alliance one, but there, there are some tiny, some tiny differences. So there is a medical questionnaire in all cases, so this is a big difference, but the good point is that the medical questionnaire with Cigna is softer. It's, it's not as tough as the one you would have to fill in with Allianz, but there is a medical questionnaire. This is a lifelong insurance, so you can keep the contract until you are not here anymore. Hospitalizations are fully covered, so two months prior to the hospitalization and six months after all the, the medical uh, care costs are covered. And the, you have got, you benefit from a 100% reimbursement, but, but there is a slight difference here. With the Allianz, you are fully reimbursed in all cases. Here, that's slightly different because you are only reimbursed at least what is reimbursed by JCS. So if JCS reimburses you, well, let's imagine 70%, in that case, uh, Cigna will reimburse you the 30% missing because the 30% missing are less than the 70% reimbursed by JCS initially. But if JCS reimburses you less than 50%, let's imagine you are in Switzerland, you want to, be, uh, to, to undergo surgery in Switzerland, and JCS reimburses you only uh, 45%, here Cigna will reimburse you also 45%. It means that JCS 45%, uh, Cigna 45%, so you will be uh, reimbursed 90% and, and not 100%. So there is a slight difference concerning the reimbursements. But it's not too critical because uh, normally JSCs reimburse you at least 50% of your medical costs, unless you are in very specific or very expensive countries. Then you have got to pay a premium, and the premium is uh, slightly higher than what you have got to pay uh, with Allianz. Here, uh, so you are retired because this is uh, an insurance only for retired people and the premium you have got to pay uh, if you choose the option without deductible, which is the one I would suggest you, of course, uh, with no, uh, is uh, 330 euros a year. So it's a little bit more expensive compared to, compared to this amount of money, 265 here, you see that it's a little bit more expensive, but at least you can get a contract. Then, similar to Allianz, there is the downgraded, downgraded option, hospitalization, sickness only. So, same contract, same coverage, unless the accidents are not covered anymore. And the premium is, of course, lower than in the previous case, because the accidents are not covered anymore. And you will tell you, Matt, you are a pensioner, so you, you don't benefit from the, the Article 73 anymore. So normally it would be better to cover both the sicknesses and the accidents. So this option covering sicknesses and accidents for a retired official would be better than this one because here the accidents are not covered. But we'll see a little bit later that there is a, a specific accident insurance also provided by Cigna, which is the exact replacement of the Article 73. Because here, if you consider Cigna hospitalization, sickness and accidents, don't forget that the accidents covered are only the accidents requiring an hospitalization. And there is no capital in case of invalidity or death. So, 
This contract is nice, but this is not the equivalent of the Article 73 as far as the accidents are concerned. But this is a very interesting product. If you miss the train or if you couldn't for any reason subscribe to the Alliance product, this option is very interesting. Then something you have got to avoid. So don't go for it unless in very special circumstances. So I will go through those slides very quickly. Europat insurance. So when you read the slide, this is an individual insurance, so no collective contract, of course, no medical questionnaire, fantastic. You don't have to tell them that you are ill, that you have got uh, too much cholesterol, that you suffer from diabetes, you don't say anything. Some waiting period, well, it, moratorium of two to three years, okay. Subscription up to the age of 70 years. Wonderful, because if you miss the two first trains, there is a third train that you can go in as well. Lifelong insurance, wonderful. And then there are two options, module one and module option one and two. Well, module one is hospitalization, I mean major risk, hospitalization in case of illnesses and accident, and options one and two includes as well the outpatient cares. This is not the point I wanted to mention. Just just go through the, the last two lines. Moratorium of unprecise duration. This is very tricky because normally you have got to know. Is it a two years moratorium or three years? You have got to know in advance. Here, well, it's not precise in the beginning. Possibility for, for the insurance company to close the contract at any time. So if they are not happy with you, they can stop the contract without having to explain you their decision and this is very tricky because if you subscribe to it you got the contract and after a few years and you are too old to go back to another one they reject you and you can't do anything else so be careful with that sort of contract then you have got to pay a premium okay it's expensive if you want to have a full coverage but what is important are the three remarks and the three lines you have got to sign if you want to subscribe to that contract and the most well crazy one is the second one one saying one saying you have got to declare that you are healthy and that you do not intend to have surgery medical or dental treatments or to be hospitalized in the near future so you subscribe to an insurance and you sign that you are not going to be ill you are not going to have surgery you are not going to be hospitalized etc etc and so on so it means that this is very dangerous because if you have got to be hospitalized, they will accept that once, twice maybe, but at the third time, they will eject you from the, from the, from the, from the contract. So be careful when you sign that sort of contract. It can be very useful. Well, this insurance can be uh, useful for, well, young people. Uh, very often we talk about, well, Erasmus students, you know, students who go abroad for one year or two years and who need to have uh, an insurance. Maybe for them it's useful to subscribe to that contract and after two years you come back to your home country and you stop the contract. Then another product, uh, we are not with our Alliance nor with the Cigna, we are with the Foyer Global Health. This is a company based in Luxembourg, but the contract is valid worldwide. I'm not going to explain this contract to you well too long because this is brand new. This is an individual insurance, meaning that there is no collective contract. So there is no negotiation between a, well, a partner and associations and the insurance company. Uh, you, have, you are allowed to subscribe to it up to the age of 65 and this is your age, this is not the date of your retirement. If you go, if you get retired of the age of, uh, well, 67, for example, this is two years too late, and if you are retired at the age of 63, you still have two years to subscribe to the contract. Here, the age is the age. There is a medical questionnaire, which is, according to what I know, not too tough, so this is a good point. There is no global waiting period but we see that there are some uh, slight differences later on. This is a lifelong insurance, so quite interesting. And this is a worldwide cover. 
amazingly, well, uh, you are covered everywhere without limitation, except in the US. I don't know why. <laughs> so you, you can go to Australia, to Switzerland. Uh, well, you are covered at 100% everywhere, except in the US. But, 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 there are two points that, are, that I've got to mention. The reimbursement. The reimbursement is a 20% reimbursement because when Foyer Global has created that product for the EU officials, they considered that the primary reimbursement by JCS was 80%. So they say, we are going to reimburse you 20% of the missing part, but 20% is 20%. If JCS reimburse you only 70 or 75%, the insurance will only reimburse you 20% in all cases, but also for the outpatient cares. So this is an advantage because all the outpatient cares are covered the same way. Alors, just for your information, uh, I am with a, a broker uh, considering to, to contact this uh, company to make them change the lines because if they can change, well, that sort of reimbursement, it would be even better. This is a very interesting product. Then, uh, of course, there are specific ceilings for the dental cares, visual aids, and some specific treatments. So they will reimburse you 20% of the bill, but included for the dental cares, but the basic dental cares. If you have got to have implants, for example, they will reimburse you 20%, but with a ceiling of 1,000 euros a year. And for certain other, well, treatments, fertility treatments, so things that are very, very specific, there are ceilings. But for all the normal outpatient cares, you are covered. So this is a very interesting, this is a very interesting product and it's going to be even more interesting if they can suppress the 20% limitation to the reimbursement. We'll see that later on and you will be kept informed if there are changes to the contract. The premium to pay is uh, a top premium as well because you have got a top coverage. This is similar to Hospicef Plus. So you have got a full coverage, major risks, hospitalization and the old patient cares even though there are well some limitations but all the the, the the cares are covered so the premium is a bit expensive as well so you see it goes from uh, well a bit more than 500 up to a bit less than 2,000 euros so you have got to pay a premium but you have got a very good coverage as well this is a, a product that we have got to follow in the future for sure well, uh, some people here in the room talk about uh, our legends. Well, there were a lot of well, old well insurance com uh, contracts that still exist, but you can't subscribe to them anymore. So I'm not going to to talk about them uh, anymore. If you have got questions, don't hesitate to ask your questions about those old contracts, and it's going to be a pleasure to answer you. Then. We talk about a lot about ceilings, excessivity, and exclusions. So, uh, normally, well, Alliance, so I mentioned that to you, Alliance considers reimburse everything even if there are ceilings or excessivity. And this is a very, very important point. We had, well, it was included, well, the ceilings were included from the beginning, but we had to negotiate so that they add the excessivity uh, rule application in the contract as well. So even if JCS applies excessivity or ceilings, Alliance will, will, will reimburse you fully the cost involved in their, in, their, in, their, in their medical cares. Of course, if JCS applies exclusions, the exclusions also apply for the insurance companies. So you can't do anything. If you are not covered by JCS, you are not going to be covered by your complementary insurance either. Uh, important, what is the code on the JCS slip? What does it mean? I, I, I talk about, well, hospitalization contracts. 
hospitalization means an hospital. And an hospital means that when you get your slip, your JC split back, the, the code that is supplied on the JC, JC split has got to start with a two. Sometimes it's a bit confusing, especially for the one day hospital. If you stay three days or one week in the hospital, this is obvious. But if you just stay half a day or one day in hospital, and if you consider that this is an hospitalization, then you have got to check that the, the code mentioned on the split starts with a two. Then a few words for those who are close to retirement or who are retired already, the accident. So once retired, you don't benefit from the Article 73, I told that already. And if you want to replace, to fully replace that article by a proper uh, insurance contract, you have got to go to this option. This is also a contract proposed by Cigna and this is an accident insurance. And here you are fully covered. So 100% of all the costs involved in an accident are covered. All the accidents, I mean accidents with and without hospitalization. So you are fully covered as you are covered with the Article 73. And then you have got to pay a premium. And the premium will depend upon the formula you choose. And the there are three formulas, A, B, and C, and the difference between the three formulas, all the medical cares are fully covered, I mentioned that already, but the difference, is, the difference between the three formulas concerns the capital you would get in case of invalidity or death. And if you want to have the equivalent, the, the total, the full, the exact equivalent of the Article 73, you have got to choose the formula C meaning that in case of invalidity, you would get eight times your pension and death five times your pension. This is quite an amazing amount of money. And you have got to pay a premium, of course. And if you choose the two other formulas, of course, the capital you would get is lower, but the premium will, would be lower as well. And in case of the Formula C, the premium you have got to pay, and this is not a fixed premium, actually, this is a levy taken from your pension directly. And, well, in case of the Formula C, this is a levy of 1.06%, meaning that if you have got a pension of, uh, well, 5,000 euros a month, the premium, the annual premium will be 695 euros. So this is expensive. It might, well, I might think, you might think that this is expensive, but it's not, because don't forget that all the accidents are covered, including the accident not requiring an hospitalization. And don't forget that once retired, it's more likely that you sleep on the soap in the bathroom, or you, you know, that sort of crazy, stupid accident, and here not requiring an hospitalization, and here, with this product, you are fully covered. You have got to pay the premium, but you are covered. And you benefit from a capital if there is a, an issue, invalidity or death. And the capital, and this is a very big advantage, so the premium is taken directly from your, from your pension, meaning that if you have to get a capital, well, in case of very bad circumstances, the capital you won't have to pay taxes on the capital you will get from the insurance company because the premium is taken out from your pension that is from a taxation point of view immunized at well the local administration so the capital you would get you won't have to pay taxes either and this is a very this is a very tricky point but this is very important because if you get the capital from an insurance company very often you are taxed and the taxation can go up to a 15 16 17 percent depending upon the country you are resident in so this is a very interesting product for pensioners and pensioners can combine this product with the hospitalization, hospitalization sickness only from Cigna or the Auspicef sickness only from Allianz. This is a very useful and interesting combination. Then 
just a few words uh, if you want to for the younger officials because when you are too old it's well not really necessary if you just want to get the capital in case of death or disability you can subscribe to that specific contract with the Cigna. So here we don't talk about hospitalization or patient care, so we don't talk about, uh, well, that sort of course, we just talk about a capital in case of death or disability. So if you want to subscribe to that contract, you can get the capital and you have got to pay a premium depending upon, upon your age, of course, and the, premium, the premiums mentioned on these slides are premiums uh, considering a capital of 100,000 euros. So, for example, if you are between 41 and 45 years of age, if you want to get a capital of 1,000 euros in case of death, you will have to pay a, capital, a premium of 205 euros uh, a year. And be careful because at the age of, uh, at the age of uh, 65, you are not covered uh, well you are not covered in case of invalidity anymore why because the insurance company knows that from that age when you are above 65 it's more likely that you get an invalidity for any reasons and they don't want to pay a capital to you in those circumstances not very important but at least you know that there is this option as well then assistance insurance policies so i will be very quickly i will go through very quickly on that point because well this is important if you need to be repatriated because all the insurances i've just talked about right now never repatriate you in your home country in your resident country if you if you if you are ill or if you, if you are hospitalized so if you are traveling abroad don't forget to subscribe to a traveling insurance uh, contract. And while well, there are many options uh, offered on the market, here I mentioned Europe Assistance, which is a very good product, but uh, there are many other products which are quite good as well. The only uh, point that I was to mention is that the capital insured, so the capital insured must be, must be at least 1 million euros. Bottom left part of the slide so you have got to be sure that you are covered at least up to 1 million euros because if you are hospitalized in the US or in Switzerland it can be very very expensive one day of hospitalization in intensive care uh, in Switzerland or the US cost uh, 10,000 euros 10,000 dollars so uh, you have got to to have enough money to to, to, if you have to, to, to be hospitalized in those countries. And then, if you have to be repatriated with a sanitary aeroplane or an helicopter, you know, if you have got a, an accident in the mountains and if you need to be, well, uh, brought down with an helicopter, you have got to pay uh, cost and with that sort of insurance, everything is included. So this is well, the proposal from Europe Assistance, which, which is uh, known all over the world, but there are many other uh, contracts which are extremely good at the national level. Here in Belgium, you have got Touring Assistance. In Luxembourg, you have got the ACL Automobile Club Luxembourg. You have got ATIAS in Belgium, and in all countries, you have got national insurances that can provide you with a very interesting uh, insurance covering coverage when traveling abroad be careful only at the capital insured 1 million euros oh, yes if you have got a, a credit card sometimes that sort of well assistance uh, traveling insurance is included in your credit card but pay attention if this is uh, the basic credit card you will get only a capital of 5,000 or 25,000 euros. It's not enough. If you have got a, a gold or platinum card, then the capital can be, well, enough. I mean, 500,000 or 1 million. But you have got to check that with your credit card provider. And be careful because with the credit cards, you are covered, provided you pay the trip abroad with a credit card. If you pay the trip abroad, whether your bank account or whatever, and if you don't pay your trip 
abroad with your platinum uh, credit card, you won't be covered. So be careful about that as well. Then I am uh, almost finished. I, I talked a lot about uh, well different products and points and it's sometimes tricky and I hope that I've been uh, clear enough and then I was able to make myself understood. But there is a document, there is a working document that is available online and I think that Cristiano or Dikra will, will send it to you. We've got a, 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 a working document uh, both in French and in English where you will find many, many information concerning all the products I've talked to you about right now. And then uh, uh, I mentioned uh, three people, Serge Crutzen, most of you know, uh, most of you know Serge Crutzen, myself, Jean-Pierre Mont, and there is a third person, Francois Satal. The three of us work for, uh, we, are, we are volunteering for an insurance uh, group. So we are the ones who are going to answer to all your questions and we are the ones who make the presentations and organize appointments as well. I know that many people here are not in Brussels, but for those who are in Brussels, uh, there is a possibility also to consult well, people from Allianz on Thursdays, on Thursdays at the Rue des Derviens. And uh, the three people here, if you want, if you have uh, very specific questions, you can email us on one hand. On the other hand, if this is really difficult or complicated, and if you are based in Brussels, we organize appointments. We organize appointments on Thursdays, and if you want to have an appointment with us, you have got to send an email to Françoise Zatal. You see her email address here, and she, she will be pleased to organize something with either, either Serge or myself. So, uh, if you want to subscribe to uh, the contracts we've just talked about, well, there are uh, two options. Either you, are, you go on, on the website of the insurance companies, or better, you go through a broker. Well, Wheeling is a broker that works uh, here in Brussels. So for those of you who are based in Brussels, uh, Stefano Histucha from Winning is a very good product, product uh, a very good broker as far as the Alliance products are concerned. Very professional. In Luxembourg, you can call Alain Courson. Uh, his company is called OCA, Office de Courtage en Assurance. He's very professional as well. For all the others, you'd better go directly on the website uh, right now. I finished my presentation uh, with that, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you very, very much, Jean Pierre. Um, during your intervention, I just got a message from one colleague of mine mentioning that uh, your conferences are excellent, but celle-ci is tellement utile. <coughs> and it is true. And I, I think that you have noticed that uh, all over the presentation there is no logo of Renewal Democracy, there is no publicity of Renewal Democracy. We are not mentioning that we are the best trade union because we don't play with your health. Health is something serious. It's not a matter of a propaganda of trade unionists. Health is something that must be dealt collectively. Uh, if you supply your contract by yourself, uh, Jean-Pierre has already mentioned, which is the risk that you are incurring at. That's why we support all the possible options, and there is not one contact who is best among the others. It depends on your situation, how you could afford to pay the premium, your age, your health uh, <coughs> situation. So that is why we are presented all the possible options, and we also know that this presentation is quite helpful, but it cannot answer all your questions. We have seen so many questions on the, on the, on the chat. Uh, first, I promise that each and every question will be answered. We will provide specific answer to all questions raised. Second, the, uh, the recording of the conference will be made available. All support documents will be published. Uh, Jean-Pierre, Serge, uh, it's at your disposal, as he has been mentioned, for uh, getting in touch with you discussing with you the possible answer to your specific needs. 
And on top of that, I want also to, to promise you that we are not just providing uh, suggestion on insurance. We are also working, that is our duty, to improve the conditions of the Jesus. We try and we get some improvements. We are opening a negotiation in the near future in order to deal with the increase of the ceilings because it's important first to have a very good system in Jesus and then to complement it with an insurance. Uh, uh, insurance cannot be the solution for the Jesus, for the Jesus not performing well. Uh, we all know that there is discussion with the national authorities for this uh, sanita, car sanitaire. It's, it's quite tough in Italy, the discussion nowadays. Uh, it is also an option. Uh, but what is clear that we want to stand for our own system. Whenever you open a staff regulation reform, there are just two items always on the table. First is the GISIS, considered to be a privilege, and second is the amount of the pension based on the last month of the salary. They are the two items that all member states are always, always challenging. And that's why we stand for that, because they are not privileged. It's part of the social package that we have subscribed when we have been recruited, and we will firmly stand for that whenever there is a new reform that we hope is not. But whenever there is a reform, we will stand for these two items that they are really what is still very good on our staff regulation. The rest has been already undermined by several reforms. So thank you very much for the more than 800 colleagues who have attended today the conference. I beg the pardon for those who are in the room that they didn't have the privilege to see the slides. Today they will have the, the slides in our website. We will convene another conference in France because it's important that everyone will understand in the preferred languages. And I can only thank you and welcome for all the thank to Jean-Claude for your very clear presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you.